Welcome back to the channel folks and today yes I'm talking about Godzilla again however this is a little bit of a different video so the second trailer for Godzilla King of the Monsters revealed two new kaiju which some people have speculated to be Komungo and Angurius now obviously another popular speculation especially for the mountain which some people thought this was the one which was Angurius uh, a lot of people thought that this mountain could be Gamera due to the spikes. Now, this is something which I didn't really bother exploring at the time, as I thought it would be one of those things that's just so far-fetched. Uh, I didn't think this, this kind of theory would, would gain much traction. However, a lot of people genuinely now believe it could seriously still be Gamera being teased here. Alongside this, I was also speaking with a writer over at Dread Central, Josh Milliken, and he posited the theory to me as well. So I thought to myself, well, I've got to explore this as a possibility. So it's a really interesting one to dive into because it's all to do with the rights of the character and how they lie with studios and how potentially these things could be integrated into movies and with kind of non-compete contracts and all of this stuff. So this video is more of a study on the industry at large than the kaiju themselves. It's kind of like a history, a 101 backstory. So a bit of history to Gamera first. Gamera was actually created by a rival studio to Toho. They made Gamera to push into the marketplace against Godzilla and capitalize on the kaiju success and trend of the time. The creator was Yonejiro Saito, Again, I've probably butchered that name, but it is what it is, I apologise. And he made the kaiju for Daiai films. The giant turtle would first make his first ever appearance in the 1965 film titled Gamera the Giant Monster. Pretty apt name. Now, although Gamera was initially created as a rival to Godzilla, I'm sure a lot of people would agree, the creature itself has now amassed a sizable fan base in and unto itself, becoming pretty much famous in its own right. Now, Daiai Films is no more due to negligence and I guess what could be assumed to be a huge mismanagement of finances because they were put into bankruptcy and it was then purchased by the Tokuma Shoten Publishing Company in 1974. They would continue to make films and for those that are not aware, Tokuma Shoten Company they are actually the company that have the world famous Studio Ghibli at one time. But unfortunately, when the founder of Takuma Shoten died on September 20th, 2000, the company and its assets were essentially segmented and moved around with the Dai Films section being purchased by Kadokaiwa Corporation in November of 2002. Now, interestingly enough, of course, people don't just buy rights. The movies continue to be made. And in 2014, the world infamous now Comic-Con trailer was revealed for a planned reboot by the Kodakaya Dai Film Studio. Although this particular reboot never came to be. And it was also later revealed that apparently it was never a reboot. It was just a short film which is hugely interesting. Why they would announce it, why they would show it, who knows, and why they would never capitalize on the massive popularity that that gained. Again, who knows? So that's a brief history. It's really important to understand this when we then take a look at the possibility of Gamera appearing in Legendary's Monsterverse. Now, the rights are the thing to take note of here. So Gamera has never faced off against Godzilla. For good reason. Toho owns the rights to Godzilla and Gamera is a rival studio's kaiju. Bringing them together in the eyes of the studios, I guess, is not a financially viable venture or they couldn't reach an agreement. And that's probably the most plausible explanation, the latter. Because of course, having Gamera fans interact with the Godzilla fans, pitting them against one another, yeah, undeniably it would have been a financial success like people across the world would pay good money to see that especially in this day and age especially when they released that reboot trailer and everyone was hyped for it this is absolutely the time to have all of this happen 
So like I say, the most plausible explanation is that they just couldn't reach an agreement on the financial aspect, how the rights would lie. Now, no matter what money the studio were going to be putting into a production like that, it would have made its money back. And in theory, they actually wouldn't have had to put that much money into it. If you think of the likes of Shin Gojira, it didn't really cost that much money, and it's the highest grossing Japanese Godzilla film of all time. So then that leads us on to this. I mean, we haven't seen Gamera on screen since 2006. So would the company sell the rights to Legendary to use, capitalizing on that current market? Absolutely. It would be very, very stupid for a studio who hasn't used their intellectual property for 12 years not to do so. It is sat there, not making any money. If a company can get money just for selling its likeness to appear in another studio's, a Western studio's movie, they absolutely would. It would be very, very surprising if that wasn't the case. It just makes sense. So it would strike me that they haven't been approached with this suggestion, with this deal, this partnership. And I think logically, this is because of the deal Legendary have with Toho currently. If Toho have never partnered with the Kodakai Dai Studios, then they could never personally come to an arrangement or an agreement with respect to the financial matters at hand, which would mean that Toho have likely stated to Legendary that yes, you may have the rights to use our kaiju, our titans, you've purchased their likeness, their names, the trademark for a set period of time, however, they cannot interact with other studios' kaiju. Almost kind of like a non-compete contract, I guess. Those familiar with any major industry that's somewhat competitive with companies, having like a monopoly and things like that, will know what non-compete contracts are. If you quit your job, the non-compete contract means that you can't go work uh, for anyone similar within the sector for a set period of time. Now, obviously, this isn't a direct comparison with what's going on here, but it's similar, and I think Toho would have made their deal with Legendary with things like this in place to say that Legendary are unable to approach other Japanese studios with Kaiju and request the rights to use their monsters. Being, of course, to Legendary having to create their own Kaiju for the universe, which we see in the Mutos from the first film and the Kaiju that have appeared in the comics since, and presumably the new Kaiju that we will be seeing in the upcoming film. The studio behind Gamera definitely have no issue working with other people. We've seen Dark Horse Comics use Gamera in a four-issue miniseries, and even Mystery Science Theatre has aired the entirety of the Showa Gamera series. So, absolutely, the studio itself wants to work with people. And also, as well, I think it's important to note here that this specialised IP rights deal that Toho have with Legendary is also the reason it's incredibly unlikely that we will see Godzilla, the MonsterVerse Godzilla, collide with the Pacific Rim universe. This is also under Legendary, it's just not going to happen. Tonally, they are completely different, but it's so unlikely that Toho would allow their monsters to go up against giant robots. The financial aspect would be too much to resolve, toys, merchandise, etc. Especially when Toho have announced that they are rebooting their own Godzilla Japanese movies in 2021, I believe it is, or 2022. So there you have it. Look, that's my exploration of why I think Gamera will never show up in the legendary MonsterVerse. This was a really interesting topic to explore. It like genuinely, and a big thanks to the Dread Central writer Josh for the jump off point here. However, what do you guys think? Is any of this new to you? Or did you know all of this and you still believe that it could possibly be Gamera anyway? I'm done here, but I pass the questions off to you and I want to hear everything you think down below in the comments section. As always, guys, if you are new here, please do hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the world of pop culture, movie news and video editorials like this. Guys, if you like this video, give it a like and a share. I've been Mr. H. Take care.